What's up, everybody? This is Cigar Sherpa Larry Mayhew, and today I'm broadcasting from my halfway finished home studio. And I've got a very special cigar for you today, one that I have been looking forward to since its inception, the Manelli by Foundation Cigars. Stay tuned. The darkest of night with the moon shining bright. There's a set going strong, a lot of things going on. The man of the hour has an air of great power. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back, welcome back. As my intro said, I have the Manelic. Manelic. I have a hard time saying that. I know how to pronounce it. I've read it a hundred times, and that intro must have took me around twelve different times because I kept stuttering on Manelic. So if you look, make if you see me look down, I'm looking down at the cue card. Manelic. All right. All right, so what y'all think of that intro, man? That's my home studio there that I got set up. I ain't done with it yet. The sound's a little bit uh, garbage, so I've got a microphone. I've got to get a better tripod and mess with the lighting and everything. I just wanted to kind of give you a sneak peek on it today on uh, what I've got planned for this channel and what I'm working on. So anyway, today's cigar I have been looking forward to. I first learned about this cigar, I think, in August or July. Um, and anytime that Nick Melillo puts out a cigar, I'm interested in it. You know, like I said, I'm not a big fan of every single cigar he's put out. I haven't smoked every single cigar. Um, I haven't tried his infused cigars because I'm not a fan of infused cigars. But Tabernacle, great cigar. The Wise Man, El Wewense, great cigar. I did a review on that last week. Oh, check it out on this channel. Very good cigar. And this one here, the Manelic, is another uh, boutique cigar, which... I guess okay. So the story behind the name, because he does pick out, he does pick some funny names or some weird names, so they they warrant some explanation. I guess Manelik was once the uh, the ruler of Ethiopia. Okay, he was also the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Okay, I know the name King Solomon. I'm not really sure what what makes him relevant to history uh i know maybe he's in the bible or something I, i'm not sure the queen of sheba i've just heard that my whole life who do you think you are the queen of sheba you know my grandmother used to say that stuff a lot the queen of sheba so i, I really don't know the historical uh relevance there you you may and or you may want to look it up or maybe you want to tell me i'm interested but anyway they had a son they named him Menelik, which i guess means the son of the wise so the last cigar was el Wewense, the wise man the son of the wise. I don't know. They got it listed as a full strength cigar. And uh, when Nick Malilo, like I said, when he gets his hands on something, I'm in it. When he gets his hands on something and produces something with his hands, I'm interested in trying it. So what we've got here, it only comes in one size. All right. So it's a uh, four and a half by 52 ring gauge petite Robusto. Great size. I love this size. Okay. People, a lot of people like a longer cigar, and I do too. But when you get a, a cigar this size, it really, to me, in my opinion, you really pick up all the flavors of the tobacco, including the wrapper in equal proportion with the binder and the fillers. And it's a really good size. And if it's done right, this thing could still last um, up to an hour, kind of like the My Father um, L. Uh, uh, La Biju, the My Father La Biju. Um, Petite Robusto, one of my favorite cigars, one of my go-to cigars. Little cigar, like same size. <laughs> I'll be puffing on that thing for 15 minutes or better, an hour if I, you know, I get busy and I put it down and smoke it slower. I tend to smoke a little faster than most people. Uh, neighbors break squeaking. All right. So anyway, it's got a San Andreas wrapper, like the El Well Wednesday has a uh, San Andreas wrapper. Um, Mexic from Mexico. It's a Maduro. And it is beautiful, chocolate brown. It's got a Nicaraguan binder from Jalapa region. It's a Corojo binder, 99. I'm not sure what that means. Maybe it was harvested in 99, or it was planted in 99, or that's just the name of it, Corojo 99. So you know. Then the uh, the fillers got a blend of the different regions of um, Nicaragua, um, Jalapa, Esteli, and that other one. I can't remember. Anyway, the construction on this thing is so freaking flawless, I almost don't even want to cut it. Look at this thing. It looks like a chocolate bar. The seams are damn near invisible. And I've said before, oh, they're always visible. This is damn near invisible. I see one seam that pops out. Hardly any vantage, but still toothy, still silky. It's got a pigtail cap. 
it's a beautiful cigar the aroma that I'm getting off of here barnyard cedar cocoa that right there should excite you folks off the foot I am getting a sweet cocoa Mm, sweet cocoa, a little bit of hay, sweet hay, and that's it. So anyway, mm, I'm excited about this. So I'm going to start incorporating rings or bands into my um, review. Uh, this band is probably one of the nicest bands I've seen. I mean, it looks like a piece of jewelry. Like if you had that hanging off your neck, off a chain you know or off your pinky finger I mean it's very very nice so well done well done I know this is gonna be a great cigar today I am going to use the guillotine cut surprise surprise it's just what am I what am I gonna do I, I don't wanna you're not gonna use a punch really for that um, and uh, you know I'm not a big fan of the V cut but I will use it sometimes on a bigger cigar but this one perfect for the guillotine or guillotine double blade and I got this one here from my local tobacconist Ansteads. Now, if you bring this sucker in on Tuesday, you get an extra 10% off if you have any Ansteads swag. So if you're in the Fayetteville area, stop by Ansteads, support that local brick and mortars. They're reasonably priced for a brick and mortars, what you expect. And I do not work for them. They do not pay me. They don't even give me free cigars. Because I ain't cool enough yet. Maybe one day they will. All right, let's get this thing stiffed. Oh yeah, by the way, triple cap, triple cap, triple cap. Very nice. All right, here we go. Let me just get that. Come on, come on. Beautiful. Mm, kind of a tight draw there. Mm, no. It's got some resistance. No problem, though. Mm, I'm getting an earthy cocoa sweet cedar. Earthy cocoa sweet cedar. It is like right off the bat, too. It's not even like hints of it, maybe. Mm, what's that? Right away, it says, stay tuned, because this is going to blow your socks off. So let's go ahead and get this thing lit. Again, I've got the Vertigo, what I call the AK-47, a lighter. So here we go. All right, all right. Whew. Wow. Wow. Right off the bat, yeah, I kind of screwed that burn up. Damn it, on such a good cigar. I hate that. You know what it is? I make perfect lights. I usually toast the end of it. Uh, I never let the flame touch it. I take my time when it's just me smoking. When I get on this freaking camera, I start trying to angle it and do it, and I'm looking out the corner of my eye at the, the display, and I screwed that burn up. I should be tarred and feathered for that, and I'm going to have to let that just work itself out. I'm not even going to mess with it. See where it's running right there. That could be a little bit from construction, but because it's a little soft. But I mean, I screwed it up. But I'm going to smoke it anyway. It's only going to be screwed up for a couple of minutes as it burns into the first third. But right away, I'm getting wood, cedar wood. Woo, pepper spice on the retro hail. Black pepper. This is starting off good. How rare is that too? Usually you get about an inch and an inch and a half into a cigar before you're like start getting the good flavors. But this thing right here, I have got cedar wood. Not a sweet cedar wood either. Not yet. It's not sweet. It's like a cedar wood, and I'm getting coffee, like a like a good cup of coffee. I ain't going to call it French roast. And I'm not going to call it Folgers. Just a good cup of like chock full of nuts coffee. Okay, that's a good decent coffee. Good. Ain't nothing special, but a um, little cocoa starting to come in now. But that black pepper. Mm. Oh, it's sweetening up now. Wow, that's quick. That's quick. Smoke is getting real creamy. And, wow, that transition's pretty quick. I don't know what I'm talking about whenever you smoke this thing. It goes from a kick-you-in-the-face, woody, cedary, 
peppery, finished, strong man cigar. And then all of a sudden it gets to not even an inch and it starts to get creamy and sweet. And spicy and when I say spicy I mean baking spice and that is great there is a good cinnamon nutmeg like an all-spice flavor there and this thing just started Wow so okay so a lot of people that know me too like I said I say this in other reviews so if you watch all my reviews thank you very much uh, if you don't watch all my reviews then shame on you you don't know what you're missing go ahead and hit that right there hit that subscribe button but if you listen to me enough you'll know that I am not a big, huge fan of, or I haven't been, okay? I came into this whole thing. I'm not a big, huge fan of Drew Estate cigars. Now, Nick Melillo is not with Drew Estates anymore, but he was. Um, so whenever I heard his name, I just automatically associate with Drew Estates. But now he's out on his own with Foundation Cigars, and I have not, I mean, every cigar this kid makes, I'm going to call him a kid because I don't know how old he is, and he looks younger than me. And he's not an old man, but... Every cigar he makes is freaking phenomenal. They're, even his Charter Oak, uh, the Connecticut cigar, I forgot what it was called. It's kind of like an ode to his uh, to Connecticut cigars and their historical. I can't remember the name of it. I'm not going to go back and edit it in or anything like that, but it was just a, a good cigar. It's complex. It's supposed to be a simple cigar. Uh, it's in a moderate price range, five to six bucks, but man, you smoke it and you get a lot of complexity. So anyway, I'm going to get into the, which I'm already into the first 30, you know, it's four and a half inch cigar. So it's not going to be a whole lot of time, you know, in between, but it's burning really slow. Okay. And that ash is nice and white. My burn where I screwed it up is fixing itself. Another testament to the fine construction of this beauty. Mm, I don't know why. I think you're going to see this cigar in 2020 on the top 25 for sure, if not number one. I'm not even all the way through this thing yet. All right, so before I turn it off, I'm going to go ahead and get into the second third. I'm getting a red pepper, crushed red pepper um, spice. It's got creamy smoke. It's got a, I want to say caramel, but I don't want to say caramel. I don't, I don't know. It's like a sweet vanilla or a toasted uh, caramel. I've got good pepper, which is now red pepper. Cedar. And with cedar, mm, it's just so complex. I, I'm tasting different stuff. The black pepper is now red pepper. I don't know if that's a vanilla or a caramel. There's still the baking spice, which is going to be cinnamon and nutmeg. And good coffee. And like I said, I'm going to call it a chock full of nuts coffee. But, uh... Y'all sit back, smoke what you're smoking on, and I will be back getting into the uh, halfway point of this cigar and tell you where it's developed or fallen off. Stay tuned. Oh, super fly. You're going to make your fortune by and by. But if you lose, don't ask no questions why. The only game you know is do or die. All right. Uh, I'm coming into the uh, second third of this cigar almost to the halfway point and that thing has worked itself out and corrected my shitty light and it is burning flawlessly the ash held on i mean it must have been two and a half inches well that would make it about half of the cigar so maybe not that long but it was about two inches and it was very thick and it was very strong and i'm driving so i pulled over because i wanted to go ahead and get into the second third uh, while the ash was still on so you guys could see it and as, as i was setting up my camera and stuff the wire hit my ash and knocked it all over my console uh and i was able to like pick it up and chuck it out the window that's how uh thick it was but flavor transitions have not stopped uh there it's a, it's roughly the same cigar let me hit this hold on it's roughly the same cigar it's mellowed out a bit so where it was full strength before or like full bodied I don't know, I get confused on that. Some people's at what they call full body, full strength, they're a little bit different. But uh, for me, the flavor's mellowed out. The strength is still there. The flavor's mellowed out. I've got a good dark chocolate coffee combo that has got a sweetness to it. That sweetness almost comes across as like a charred caramel. It's got that good 
core tobacco, just very fine tobacco. You can just taste it. It's got a sweetness. It's got an earthiness. It's got a mustiness. The retro hail is 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 very good. That 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 black pepper became the red pepper, and it mellowed out. It's there on the back end. It's not so much prominent. There it is. See, it's creeping in now. Almost like if you ever get water up your nose when you're in a swimming pool, just barely. Uh, it kind of lingers, that little feeling back there. This this red pepper lingers on the back of the Retro Hell palette. This cigar is so beautiful. I love it. I want to shut the hell up. I'm going to keep smoking this thing. And I have, I'm going to be smoking. Unless this thing radically changes, I'm going to be smoking this thing until my fingers burn. I may have to break out the wife's roach clips. Um... So, yeah, there we go. I can't say much more about it. I can keep going on and on about how good it is. Mm. Again, crafted by Nick Melillo, formerly of Drew Estates, now of Foundation Cigars. And if you don't know who this guy is, just, you know, while you're smoking a cigar, I don't know if you watch all full length of the video or just fast forward and catch little certain parts of it or turn it off because my ugly face uh, scares you off, but when it's over, when you're not doing nothing, check out some uh, interviews of this this kid. He's a young guy. Uh, I think he might be from Connecticut or something, but he moved to Nicaragua at a young age. He worked for Drew Estates as their master of tobacco or master blender, uh, and then he left to start his own thing. And uh, I mean, he makes Tabernacle, he makes Charter Oak, he makes um, the the Wise Man, which was number the number three cigar ranked on the 25 top 25 cigar aficionado of 2018 um this cigar didn't come out until later in the year i think it might have debuted in july at 2019 as a limited run uh and it's just now showing up i think i saw on just here in last week or so two weeks ago i think i saw uh, an article in cigar aficionado online talking about it that it was like one of the cigars you needed to try because it had just come out so i don't know exactly when it dropped uh, I just walked into my local tobacconist here in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I was getting some cigars to review, and I seen it, and I was like, oh, it does exist. So I got one, okay, and I don't even remember what I paid for it, so whenever I'm in between the uh, second and last third, I'm going to look it up because you need to know the price of this. I know it wasn't cheap. Um, I'm not sure, but uh, I'm not even going to speculate because I, I don't remember. I, just, I, I grabbed about five or six cigars and I know I spent like 80 bucks so um you know it's definitely in the ten dollar range if I had to guess but it should be a man if I paid 20 30 dollars for this the only thing I would be sad about is the fact that it's not twice the size now in the beginning I said that I like this size and I do and this size you do pick up a lot of flavors especially on the wrapper I believe that that spiciness that I'm that sweet spiciness that I'm getting is probably from the wrapper you can really really get a good wrapper flavor when you get a big big ring gauge you tend to get more of the filler the wrapper kind of fades away into the the background and that's just the way I feel about it you get a smaller ring gauge you get sub 50 you, you know you get a, you get some strong wrapper flavor but then it kind of overshadows the um, the filler and the binder tobacco so good selection here great choice I'm gonna shut up now so I can smoke this thing stay tuned folks all right coming into the final third of this cigar I took the band off of it it is still burning great and if you remember I kind of screwed up the light as I do in my videos I don't take as much time with them and I'm you know not I'm kind of looking at the camera and I explained all that but it corrected itself and it has been burning sharp the entire time the draw is absolutely perfect on this cigar it is not too loose so it does not get hot and you don't have to pull through your ears to get smoke through it I mean it's just perfectly constructed um, flavor wise it has stayed consistent since the end of the first third of the cigar it started off on the first light with a good uh, pepper thick uh, pepper kick and it had that uh, cedar that sweet cedar note that quickly probably three puffs in mellowed out or smoothed out to a creamy almost toasty caramel with baking spice so when you take caramel and you take baking spice which is cinnamon nutmeg and some other stuff there but good cinnamon light cinnamon 
and nutmeg flavor in with that caramel with that coffee note in the background and that black pepper which rolled into a red pepper okay it is just absolutely phenomenal and it has stayed that way very very well balanced cigar very complex flavors in this cigar uh, and it has stayed I'm all the way down now to about I don't know inch and a half left it's got a good red pepper on the retro hail and uh, the finish on this thing is, is it, I, I don't want to say dry but it's got a dry finish um, it, it, it's not a, an oily finish on the palate it, you got an oily finish mouthfeel to the cigar uh, from the wrapper and again the the flavors in this cigar are so good that I wish I had another one to light up right behind it uh, definitely a, a Churchill size cigar would be great so Nick if you watch this um, you know if you ever lay eyes on this video we are all requesting that this cigar be at least a six inch. The ring gauge is perfect, and I like the ring gauge. Not only the way it feels, you know, when it's in your mouth and the way you're holding it, but it really adds to, it lends itself to a good balance of flavors between the wrapper and the binder and the, uh, the fillers. You know, you get a, a big, big ring gauge, you're getting more filler. The, the, the wrapper will kind of, you know, take a back seat. Mm. I'm, I'm calling it now. If this thing is not the number one cigar for 2020, it is definitely going to be in the top five. Uh, and it's definitely made its way into my top five on the first third of the cigar, and it has not failed. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my top five. I think the last one I added to my top five that was new to me was the Superfly by Oscar Valladares. Great cigar. You need to check that one out. I'm going to probably put this one at number three. Okay. For the year... For the cigars that I've smoked this year, this is number one. This is a good cigar. If you haven't heard about it, look it up. If you haven't smoked it, go buy one. If you can't go buy one, order one. Order them. I don't know if you can order them singly. I haven't really looked into it. Like I said, fairly new. I just kind of found out about it. I heard about it. Never heard nothing about it. Uh, the, the, the forums on Facebook that I'm in, I haven't seen anybody mention it. Um, and I read an article, I believe it was on December, right before Christmas, maybe the 22nd, 23rd of December, on the uh, a list of cigars that you should try that were new on Cigar Aficionado. And it should be, uh, it's going to be very popular, I think. Popular to me. So, Anyway, um, let me see if my notes here. Oh yeah, the price on this thing, uh, I don't remember what I paid for it. But when I looked it up, I believe it was a box of 10 for, uh, shit, I can't remember now. Anyway, it came out to about 12 bucks. Okay, so I might have paid 13, 13 50 for it. Well worth it. Very well worth it. Does this meet the criteria to make it into the daily arsenal? Man, if I could afford it, then hell yes. I would smoke this cigar every day. It wouldn't be my only cigar because I don't like to smoke the same cigar all the time. But it would definitely be the cigar that I... Probably my midday after lunch. Okay, I like to start my day off with a with my go-to, which is normally a uh, an LGC Wavel Maduro or a Belinda Black, which is a great cigar, very value priced cigar. Um, this cigar paired today with coffee, black coffee, strong black coffee too, goes great. It would go good with my normal, which is normally a Coca Cola. But you know, I'm not a whiskey drinker, but I'm, it would just go with anything. Probably a good red wine, too, if you're a wine drinker. I don't really like to smoke cigars and drink wine at the same time, but I know some people do. Mm. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out because it is getting down uh, to the nub. I'm going to have to break out the roach clips, and I definitely am going to break out the roach clips and, and, and finish this thing off. So, again, San Andreas wrapper, uh, Nicaraguan Corojo binder, a tri-blend of Nicaraguan tobacco in the filler. Okay, and it's coming from Jalapa, Esteli, and the other one. It starts with a C. Name escapes me right now. But I'm going to shut up. I'm going to end this review because I want to keep smoking this thing. And I don't want to miss out on anything that it has to uh, offer. Um, definitely try it out. This has been your Cigar Sherpa, Laird Mayhew, reminding you to be polite to everybody that you meet. Happy New Year. <laughs>